Hi, welcome to Abby's Den. I'm Abby. Been shopping again and Aldi have their So Crafty Week this week, in which means um, I was lucky enough, because they sell out really quickly, I was lucky enough to pick up one of these sewing machines. So unboxing it for you today, just to give you a review. Now I've never owned one of these. So the first thing we've got is uh, the letter guide on there. So we know that this machine does fonts already. It has a three year warranty, so any problems take it back. Aldi don't offer a service, um, so you will need to, if there is a fault with it, you do need to take it to a service repair. So the user manual is really important to read. You need to grab yourself a cup of tea and a cupcake and sit there and have a look through. Now in here, it will tell you what should have come with the machine. So check all your accessories. When you do open your box, just make sure you've got everything with you. Uh, in there. Now with this pedal it comes separate from the cable so I'm wondering whether this machine does allow you to do separate stitching so you don't have to use pedals. Quite a lot of people find that function really useful particularly if you perhaps use a wheelchair or if you have trouble with your feet. Now that's quite a lightweight machine. I think it's about six kilograms and it's a 36 watt powered which means it's not very powerful. The necking machine that they had previously has a power of 70 watts. This one only has 36 watts, which is already telling me it's not a massively powerful machine. But I've already spotted that this machine has a bobbin loaded. It's a top loading machine. I was expecting it to be a front loader. It's a top loading machine, which is already a bonus. And um, they've threaded it up for me. The only other company that have done that on machines is the necky and so i'm really inspired by that i think that's really going to be useful immediately behind i can see i can drop the feed dogs so that's going to be a great a great one for those of you who want to do free motion embroidery it feels quite robust i've had um previous experiences with cheaper models of machines that feel really wangy plastic feels really um you know just you can tell it's not well made just by the, the plastic. Uh, this one feels really robust. I've got all the buttons here on the front. Um, it's a bit grey, <laughs> not very cheery. So we could maybe liven it up with some stickers and things. It's um, got the horizontal feed system for our threading. So it's got a side cutter on the machine, which is brilliant because I'm always rooting around for those scissors when I, when I finish my row of stitching. And we've got an automatic um, threader for people like me who are wearing glasses. You're going to need that. So that's brilliant already. So already just looking at it, not even pulling out the accessories, I'm already pleased with what I'm getting for my £150 this, I spent this morning. So let's take off the extension box at the front and pull out the accessories bag that's hiding in there. The accessories and just as I'm pulling that out, look what i found again the only other company that have done this is the necky and you've got a test a test a test stitch sample that's a tongue twister for the first thing in the morning isn't it and you've got your buttonhole so you've got an automatic buttonhole foot there so that's another blessing for 150 pounds i think in theory we're doing pretty well here i'm quite pleased uh, with it this is just a test stitch that they've put in the machine for you to see what kind of stitches this machine provides so that in a sense is good anyway and i really do think that that little doggy that we can see in the flowers are quite cute and they're already going to feature on my next project so i'm going to do a project after this i've got all these fat quarters that i picked up so you need to look out for that video too. When we open the accessories bag, it's quite full, which is really good news. So we get rid of that bag. Lots of plastic in this. We need to reduce plastic. We want to have less plastic. So we've got our automatic foot, uh, buttonhole foot. It allows for um, corded buttonholes, which is really good. Um, I need to use this a little bit uh, more, the corded, because it not only is it for tailored jackets, heavyweight wool knits, it's brilliant for stretch fabrics as well. You've got that all essential brush at the end of your seam ripper, a lifesaver to many of us. We've got a screwdriver that's going to be useful to change your needle and it's going to be useful to make sure 
uh, you can access the needle plate and clean your machine out and people need to do that a lot more regularly. We've got a twin needle and we've got two spare needles. Um, it just says needle on the packet. There is no size guide. So I might need to get the camera out and zoom in so that I can see what size they are before I start my project. Um, I'm hoping those twin needles are ball points so I can do some um, knit fabric. Now I've got what should be a bottle of oil, but I can't see a bubble in there. So I'm thinking it's empty. And you know what? It actually is. It's an empty bottle, no oil in there. That's cool. <laughs> so uh, I don't know what to do with that. What do you do with that? <laughs> that's cool. All right, we've got an extra spindle. So that spindle is going to sit on the top of your machine here and I can grab a second spool of thread and we can do twin needle stitching, which is fantastic, which means that there is an, uh, probably going to be a nice selection of stitches to do twin needle sewing. Great. We've got a button foot to go with the buttonhole foot so we can attach buttons easily. Um, we've got a blind hem foot, which is going to be great as well. So if you're adjusting trousers, taking up hems, that's going to be useful, making clothes. And you've got your spool cap, so your spool cap goes on the end of uh, your thread spindle. They haven't given you a piece of felt, so I'll probably will cut some felt out. We've got a second screwdriver there. This one is better for... Did you show the plate. threading up there? Sure. We have a wide foot here. This is the decorative stitch oh, foot. Um, mm -hmm. Like that, and it's quite a big foot actually and you've got your zip foot and they've given you three extra bobbins you've got one in there already and one bobbin there and i think the next thing we need to do is plug the machine in and give it a good go so we're going at a different angle here i'm going to thread up the sewing machine i'm going to use even though we've got the bobbin in there already i'm going to fill up a bobbin and i'll show you how to do that now so we want to just unwind our thread just twist the bottom there Use a good quality thread, that's really important. Even though you've managed to get yourself a good deal on a sewing machine, don't skimp on needles and threads. They will make such a difference to your sewing. So buy good quality threads. Pop your thread coming from underneath and pop your spool cap on there. That will help prevent it going whizzing off when you've got full uh, speed. Right, let's have that thread coming from here. We're going to follow the guide round the back there. No, we're not. We're going to fill up the bobbin first. Okay. So make sure your bobbin thread, make sure your thread's coming down from underneath. We're going to follow the spindle round. So you want to make sure you get under this tension spring. So it's a spring in there squeezing on your thread. So that's really important that you do that. Grab one of your bobbins and you've got tiny holes on the outside. So go from the inside out, pulling that thread through. You might need to snip the end away. Right, and get that thread through, just catch that thread and place your bobbin on that bobbin spindle there. Hold on to that thread there. We do need some power, so I will need to plug the machine in. So let's just flip the machine round so you can see. We've got the cable uh, mains goes in there and that's for the pedal. And then our two pin plug. So if you do ever lose this uh, mains plug, you can just grab one of these. You can buy these plugs. Lots of people do lose them. Um, and you can just get uh, any regular radio two pin plug for this machine. And there we go. And it reveals a lovely screen there for us. Okay. So you need to hold on to this thread here, hold it nice and tight and push the bobbin towards the guide. And immediately there, they show you an image of the bobbin there. Okay, put your foot down on the pedal, hold on tight to this and let's go. Now you need to make sure that your thread's going all the way up and down. If it's not, just give it a little bit of a tease with your finger. But because I've got enough thread on there, I can cut this thread away. 
And that's just to help get it threading in there. That shouldn't happen. So that's enough for the moment. Okay. To cut the thread there, pull the spindle back and release the bobbin. Now, when we lift this up, we're going to just drop it straight into the bobbin there. So I'm going to lift it and press the foot so I can move the foot out of the way. We need to pull this switch over to the right, like that, and it releases the lid. Do that again. And it flings that up, pull that off, remove the bobbin in there. And what we need to do is just grab this bobbin up and just drop it straight in so it's going in the right direction. When you pull on the thread, the bobbin should turn anti-clockwise. Okay, so now we need to just place that thread in the hook there and pull it round. You hear the click and then I just pull the thread over to the side. You can cut that thread a bit shorter if you want to use your thread cutter. Now back to the top. So grab that top thread, take it off that tension spring and we're going to bring it round to the back over the guide, down this channel and back up and we swing the thread round and it catches on this hook here. Bring it down this channel and grab that guide, thread it through that guide there and the way to do it is grab, grab the thread on that hand and swing it round and you get inside that guide. Now we're going to use the automatic threader so to make sure that the automatic threader is lined up to where we need it to be you need to make sure your needle is in the centre so if you're on zigzag go back to a straight stitch so go back to zero zero put your needle down and lift it back up again and that resets the needle back in the right position just hook that thread round that hook there bring the threader down and push it back so underneath those hooks and the tiny hook inside the eye should catch the thread and pull it through. And there we go. You'll get a tiny hoop there and you can just grab that hook and pull it through until you get one thread like that. Now to catch the bottom thread, hold on to that thread, the top thread, and just press needle down and needle up again and it brings that thread up. You. So now we've got both threads up and you are ready to sew. Okay, so now we've set up the sewing. Let's grab some fabric. I've done, I've got a piece of fabric here and I've just drawn some straight lines. When you're new to sewing, just do that. I get all my beginners, all my adults and the children to just sew on some straight lines and I thought, why not? So the first, uh, first one we're going to do is a straight line, the zero, zero is there and it will give us this nice straight line in the middle. So let's just make sure we've got a good tension. The factory settings is on four. We rarely move the tension, um, but we will keep it there. So start from the end, doesn't matter where you start, I'm going to start there. And just press your bit, just press the pedal gently and get control and speed up, just like driving a car. And we can just go straight along, follow that line and speed up if you need to. And that sounds really good. I like the sound of that machine. You can lock the stitch, so go back and then just do a few stitches forward and that will lock your stitches for you. Lift up the presser foot and swing it round the cutter. And there we go. Not on the line, but we're almost there. Right, so let's try a different one. I think we're going to do a zigzag. So we've go up to stitch three. All you need to do is press the, um, the up arrow and we're on stitch three. This here tells you how long the stitches are. So it sets it to a default and how wide the zigzags go. It's telling me to use the J foot. The J foot is the standard foot that's in the machine. So I'm going to just do a zigzag now. That oh, wasn't good sound. That is not a good sound. Just speed the head. It's fine. And we'll lock the stitch. 
I think we will do some decorative stitches 29. Now when you're doing these stitches actually, when you start using the decorative stitches, you have a, a second foot here which is for the decorative stitches. So why don't we use that instead? So the way to remove the foot is to press the hook that sits at the back of your presser bar like that and it releases the foot and we take that out all we need to do is clamp onto this little bar here and we can do that with our left hand if you're right handed place that underneath the clamp and with the right hand put the press foot down and it catches it for you it takes time to position it um, but you might need to practice doing that Okay, so let's go for stitch 29. So the way to get there is press up and it takes you up in tens, and then when you press individually, it takes you up in ones. So 29. And I can put my foot right down and it will just stitch. So hopefully it will get all the way across. The machine sounds lovely, you know. I like it. Okay, we stop there. Uh, you'll need to work out where uh, where it stops on the machine or the patterns when you're doing patterns. I'm going to do another pattern actually. You can alter those numbers if you want to, make them longer and shorter. But if I have the oval around there, that's the default setting. You see how the oval goes, it disappears. So the oval is the default settings for the machine. Let's go. Okay, so we'll just stop there, release that, and cut the thread. So you can see I've started half of the flower. So you need to um, pay attention. I think it's holly actually. I should have done that in green. That would have looked good, good didn't it? Very Christmassy. So far, the machine sounds really good, even though it faulted on the zigzag. That could have been uh, something I did wrong. So in order to do the letters, we have to go on the font there. And then we might need to do the letters individually. I can't see a memory. Can you see the middle of the memory? All right, so let's try 17. I don't think it will memorise that way. No, it doesn't. No, I think we're going to have to go through each one. Right, we have to go through each one, I think. Letter programmes. <gasps> Letter programmes, 47. Let's see how we do that. All right, so. Does A? No, it still it doesn't do it. So I have to do. Seventeen again. Okay. And you put your foot down. Okay. So we've got the H. Now I have to work out where P is going to go because I've got the A. So I need P. Fifty-one. Okay, we want two P's. Yes, it stops, so the machine stops at each letter, which is good. So allow it to stop and then you can you know that you've got the right letter. Now we want a space. The space is 66. Okay, so we've got happy. And we want C is 12. So this could take a long time to do. And just one more. This is hard work. 54. But I have to say, as tedious as that seems, those letters aren't too bad. The Y looks a little bit small. I don't know what's going on with the Y. Maybe I rushed it and the A looks a little bit funny. 
so we can go back. So I'll change the foot back to regular foot. The machine, so even though the power is only 36 volts, watts, it's not a powerful machine, um, but it's producing some good results there. I'm only on one sheet of fabric with a little bit of interfacing on there. So I'm going to start from there. So I think I've lost my S. Uh -huh. Never mind. Okay. So I'm going to stitch two left two together. I can unpick that. I can unpick that. That'll be fine. We're going to see what it's like with brains. So I'm going to take this back off. And I'm actually going to use the blind hem foot this time. Okay. So we're going to add a bit of braiding. We're going to be a bit daring to see if this works. Right, so what we're gonna do, so we've got the blind hem foot, and what you can do is alter the width over here using this screw, okay? So even though it's for a blind hem, you can actually use it to position things like this, these cute pieces of braid, right? And then it will help you keep your riprap in the right, so you've not got to worry about pinning this down. Pinning Rick Rack must be the world's worst job. <laughs> I'm going to increase the stitch length as big as it can go, as long as it can go. Oh, we're on the we're on some tool. We want to go back to uh, we want to go back to the straight stitch. So we're going to go as long as we can go, which is four and a half. And actually. I'm going to make sure my stitch needle is going the wrong way. So what I want to do is get that needle hitting the middle of the rick rack. So what I want to do is adjust this foot. So if I put that there, I know my needle is going to go in the middle of the rick rack. I'm going to make sure I move it over to the middle of that line that I sewed earlier. Okay. And that rick rack needs to be sitting on the edge there. Okay, so unscrew that to as wide as you need it to go. And then that way I can make sure I hit the rick rack against that wall and get a nice straight line. Take that off and just cut it there. What I'm going to do. Right, so we just lay a second piece of fabric on there. And we're just going to remove that foot and we're going to go back to our J foot. You know what? I'm going to join two pieces of fabric together and see if how it goes with that. So lock the stitches. It's handling this curved corner really nicely. You can see what I've done now. I made myself a Christmas stocking. There we go, got Christmas stocking. We'll put a loop on there. It seems to be coping with that braid all right. So, to handle my bad sewing, let's have a look. So there we go, that's a Sew Crafty from Aldi Sewing Machine. It is uh, branded as an Aldi Sewing Machine. There are a few issues that I had with the zigzag. It just, for some reason, it just decided not to sew anymore. But that was the only one time it happened. It could have been, it, it could have been something I did. Um, but because it stitched out everything else beautifully on the front and the back, the, the tensions were perfect. So I made myself a little stocking. The only thing was the fonts weren't great. Um, of, uh, I bought recently from Aldi the Neki sewing machine. And the fonts on there are absolutely splendid. They're perfect. This one, you can see that they're a bit gloopy looking. They're not so great, but you can read them. 
so it's not too bad. The rest of the stitches have come out beautifully, so I was quite happy with that. The threading system is so easy. The automatic threader is a godsend for many of us who struggle with eyesight. It's a little bit tedious changing the fonts. In the Neki, you can actually have, you do have a memory bank on there, so that was the advantage over over this Olby. They're both priced at 150 but uh, in, in all, the, the selection of feet that you've got and the accessories is splendid. That's a good selection at this sort of price bracket. We do know it does free motion, it does twin needle, it has font, the fonts aren't great, everything else has come out beautifully. So if you manage to bag yourself one, I think you've got yourself a really good deal and I hope you're happy. I might make myself a cover for this machine actually and um, not lose this. So I'll see you soon. Take care.